Dragon Quest was released on the Japanese Famicom console in 1984. It would become a huge hit and spawn many sequels on various consoles, and the series is still going strong today. Five years after its release in Japan, Dragon Quest was exported to the US and Canada, and to avoid copyright infringement on something else that was called Dragon Quest, the name had to be changed to Dragon Warrior. The graphics were upgraded, text was tweaked, and wiped out of the game altogether was any suggestive material pertaining to religion. At the beginning you enter the name of your character, and you'll start out in Tanticle Castle where King Loric gives you the backstory. You're the descendant of Edric, a legendary warrior whose legacy will be mentioned a lot throughout the game. Edric warded off evil spirits with a magic globe known as the Ball of Light, but an evil emperor known as the Dragon Lord recently stole it and wreaked havoc amongst the kingdom of Alfgard. Not to mention that he also kidnapped the king's daughter, Princess Gwalyn, just to fuck with his head. So your objectives are to save the princess, kill the dragon lord, and retrieve the ball of light, thus saving the world. No pressure. While wandering around in the game's primary overhead view, pressing the A button will bring up this window with your main A options. Talk starts a conversation with someone if they're standing in front of you. It's important to talk to everyone you can as some people will have information that is helpful and sometimes vital of beating this game. Status lets you basically view your abilities, levels, and weapons. Stairs sends you up or down a flight of stairs if you're standing on one. Search will uncover a hidden item if you're standing in the right place. Item lets you scroll through your items and use them if you need to. Door unlocks a closed door if you have a magic key. Take picks up an item and spell gives you the ability to cast a spell of your choice. You start out knowing shit about magic, but as you level up you'll learn some spells gradually. You'll also have a rigid number of magic points. Each spell will cost you a certain number of magic points depending on the spell. Your maximum number of magic points will also increase as you level up. After exiting the castle where you start, you'll end up outside in Alfgard, which is where a good 95% of your playing time takes place at. Out here you'll randomly encounter enemies and do battle with them in text-based form. You can choose to fight, which will attack them with whatever weapon you have equipped. You can run away if you feel too threatened by a strong enemy or if you just don't feel like fighting. You can cast a spell, as several spells are meant for use in battle. Or you can use an item, which is necessary in battle only once in a great while. Each enemy has distinct attributes in terms of power, defense, response speed, and sometimes spells and special attacks. All of these factors are calculated into the text-based battles, sort of a roll of the dice. You have a certain number of hit points, which is basically the amount of life you have left. Every hit you take will decrease a certain number of your hit points, and every hit you inflict will decrease some of the enemy's hit points as well. The amount of hit points decreased will be displayed in the box during battle. As you level up high enough, the weaker enemies that really have no chance against you will sometimes flee. Sometimes your attacks will miss, sometimes theirs will miss, sometimes you'll blast your opponents with a critical hit, which will take away a lot more hit points than your ability normally can and often kills enemies in the first shot. After defeating an enemy, you'll get a certain number of experience points and gold. The numbers are varied based on the strength of the enemy. You save up on gold mainly to upgrade your armor, weapons, and various other items while experience points are what you need to level up. After reaching a certain number of experience points, you'll advance the level and gain attribute increases, and sometimes learn spells. Every enemy also has at least one counterpart. A stronger version palette swap with different colors, sometimes an additional weapon, or an inverted image of the monster. It's always interesting to see new and improved counterparts of old enemies come out. The window on the left pops up whenever you're standing still or engaged in battle or conversation. It keeps track of your basic stats. Keep an eye on your hit points, especially during battles. If you die, you'll be sent back to Tentacle Castle where the king will bitch at you for dying. You won't lose any game data, but you will lose half your gold, so staying alive is important. While walking around outside, every once in a while you'll see these building icons. These are towns where you can shop for items and weapons, talk to people, or stay at an inn for the night. Sleeping is important because it'll heal all your wounds and restore all your magic points. 
Because the game is so long, there's no real way to complete it all in one sitting. To save your work, go back to the king and he'll save your deeds on the Imperial Scrolls of Honor and data is saved on the game's battery pack. Now, for this walkthrough, I won't be instructing you to save every single time you need to. You really ought to save every time you advance a level and every now and then in between. Some may want to save more often than others, depending on how conservative you are. A lot of you will probably be playing on emulators anyway, so in that case, saving through King Loric is really obsolete. So your first order of business after the king talks to you is to grab all the items in the treasure chests. You'll get a torch, 120 gold, and a magic key. Talk to the guards and use the key to open the door. Now you're on the main floor of Tentacle Castle. Some areas you can't get into yet because of locked doors, but we'll get to that later. For now, talk to everyone and remember this old guy in the southern part of the castle. He'll come into play in a little while. Now, leave the castle and head straight for this town directly east. You have no weapons or armor, so it's real important to get there as fast as possible. This town is called Breconary. Talk to everyone in the town and go to this armor shop, buy the club for your first weapon, and clothes for armor. I don't know why you need regular clothes, I guess you start off naked and they didn't want to make a sprite of a nude warrior. So then after that, go to the tool shop in the southeast corner of the town. Buy the dragon scale and equip it. It'll increase your defense by two points. Head back outside and wander around the vicinity of the castle in Breconary. You'll encounter battles with the weakest enemies in the game, the slimes and the stronger red slimes. Although they're the biggest pushovers in the game, they're also a staple in the Dragon Warrior franchise. Whenever the game comes to mind, one of the first things that'll pop into your head are these smiley faced Hershey Kiss shaped blobs of sludge. They don't even look like they're fighting you, it almost looks like they're happy to see you and want you to join them for tea. So after fighting several slimes and gaining some experience points, you'll graduate to level 2. Continue fighting in this area. Notice how you're doing a little bit more damage now. Go back to the inn and Breconary and rest if you start running low on hit points. Once you get to level 3, you'll learn the heal spell, which will increase your hit points whenever you cast it. You can cast this spell during battles or any time you're walking around and you happen to notice your health is a little low. Remember to sleep at the end once you level up to get magic points built up. At this point, start exploring a little bit further north but not too far. You'll start seeing drakeys and ghosts now. If you have the four magic points necessary to cast heal, use it instead of going back to the end. Once your magic points are low, go back to Tantacle Castle and go back to this old guy that says a prayer for you or some shit. Every time you talk to him, your magic points will fill all the way back up. So instead of resting at the end, just go to this guy, use heal as much as you can, and keep filling up on magic points to get your health all the way back up. And remember to leave with full magic points as well. Once you get to level 4, you learn the Hurt spell, which basically does more damage than your weapon or power can at this level. Go back to Breconary and buy an extra torch. Then go north of where you were to this mini desert area and enter Edric's cave. You can't see shit, so I'm light up a torch to make the navigation a little bit more possible. There are no enemies in this cave, so you don't have to worry about dying in here. But the torch will eventually wear off and you'll be back to complete darkness. So the extra torch can come in handy if you get lost. Make your way to the southeast corner of the first floor and go down the stairs. Then weave your way around these little nooks and crannies to get to the treasure chest, which turns out to be your ancestor Edric's tablet. It basically explains that you need three items to get to the island where Charlock is, the fortress of the Dragon Lord. It doesn't mention where these three items are, but that they're being protected by three worthy keepers. Leave the cave and fight in the desert area. You don't want to go too far, because if you get into trouble, you're not far from Tentacle where you can heal up from the old dude. Use the heal spell if you're in trouble and use hurt against magicians if they start kicking your ass a little too hard. Once you get 70 gold, head back to Breconary and buy the leather armor and he'll buy your clothes back for 10 gold. Then when you get up to 90 gold, go back and buy the small shield. You may or may not still be at level 4 when you reach this amount, it all depends on the enemies you kill. Thank <laughs> you.